Vow of the Disciple is like if Bungie thought that the part everyone liked about Last Wish was remembering all of the different symbols and callouts. Let's start our memorization journey with the first encounter. Team composition for this encounter does not matter too much as there is no boss. You should play with whatever subclass will allow you to get your respective job done, of which there are two jobs, Roamer and Protector. Protector will be able to utilize Stasis pretty well, but again, whatever works for you is the best thing to pick. In terms of weapons, if you're going to be a Protector, you probably want to use something that can clear a lot of ads. Osteo Striga comes to mind, Lawrence Shriver, Agger Scepter, or just a good workhorse legendary weapon. However, you will also want a weapon with unstoppable rounds, as there are unstoppable ogres that spawn throughout the fight that you will most likely need to solo. On contest, this can be pretty tough, but on normal mode, if you are at or above level, they are probably a couple of linear fusion shots or a rocket away from death. In terms of resistances, it depends on what you're dying to, but all elements of damage are present here. Void grenades, solar shotguns, and arc lightning attacks. So choose based on what you are dying to the most. The goal of this encounter is to have all three obelisks accept your offering. How you make that happen is quite a journey though. Split your team into groups of two, one team per obelisk. There will be two of these at the front and one in the back. Of these teams, you are going to have a Protector and a Roamer. The Protector needs to make callouts to the Roamer in order to figure out where they need to go and to figure out what symbols are important to their obelisk. They will be protecting their obelisk, opening and closing doors for their team, and killing everything in front of them. If enemies attack the obelisk, you will actually lose time, as attacking the obelisk fills its timer faster, and you do have a limited amount of time to get all of the symbols that you need. There are, count them, 26 different symbols that can potentially appear in this raid, and I'm pretty sure all of them can appear in this fight. So let's break down how you will get the symbols that you actually need. In front of each obelisk are three blank panels. One of these panels on a random side will start with displaying either the Traveler or the Pyramid on the top panel. This indicates a side of the map that a Taken Knight will be spawning in. If you look at the center of the arena, you'll see a Traveler and a Pyramid. So from where you spawn in, the Pyramid is on the left side and the Traveler is on the right. So if you get the Traveler symbol, Traveler means that the Taken Knight is on the right side of the arena, which you need to go hunt down. These knights want to stay hidden. They will be on the outer parts of the arena. Note that it is possible for knights to spawn directly south, basically underneath where you spawn in. Just be aware of that. For example, the bottom obelisk team gets the first symbol on their panels. It's pyramid. So you go look for the knight in the left half of the room and then kill it. That's it. After killing the knight, the middle panel will get a symbol, and a different obelisk team will get their first symbol on their panel sometime after. This second symbol notes which doorway you need to enter in order to get to your glyph keepers. There are quite a lot of rooms around this arena, and you're just going to need to memorize where they all are. Each room has their symbol displayed directly above it though, so it's not a huge deal if you don't remember all of them. You need to go into the corresponding room that matches the symbol in your middle panel. If your door is closed, then shoot the crux in the middle of the arena which started the fight, or have someone else do it. This will open closed doorways and close open ones. People need to call out if they get trapped in their room in order to be let out. Let's use my first clear as an example. I kill the knight, which triggers the next reveal, which is the drink room. The name of the symbol is drink. As the roamer, it is now my job to go into that room and kill whatever is inside. You can also have whoever is close by go into that room, but my team wanted to stay a bit more organized when possible, so roamers roamed to their room for their respective obelisk. Once you get into the room, you'll be greeted by some late spawning screebs and two more symbols, light and darkness, which is always left and right. Every room has a light and darkness symbol on the left and right. Here's where the protector comes back into play. 
A final symbol will appear in the bottom panel, either light or darkness. If it's light, you need to kill the Glyph Keeper on the light side. Darkness is the darkness side. Regardless, whichever one you need to kill, kill it. A symbol will appear after they die. This symbol needs to be memorized, written down, typed out, whatever you need to do to remember it. After that, leave the room. Remember that you may need someone on the outside to shoot the crux to let you out. Meanwhile, every other team will also be doing this at the same time for their respective obelisks. So communication being clear and concise is very important as there will be a lot of callouts all happening at once. You'll also need to be watching out for unstoppable ogres, orange bar lurkers, and other enemies that will be trying to disrupt the process. After all three roamers have their symbols, each obelisk will ask for an offering. Each obelisk has three sides with three symbols on it. One of the three obelisks will have all three symbols that your team discovered. The others will not. They'll only have two, maybe they only have one. It is now your job to find the obelisk that has all three symbols on it and shoot them. You need to shoot them very quickly in succession. Too much time between shots and it will not work. Position one person so that they can see six symbols and the other person can see three. This will make it easier to shoot. If you do this correctly, the obelisk will accept the offering, which means the phase is complete and you will repeat this process two more times. If the obelisk rejects you for whatever reason, it will shuffle the symbol locations and you'll need to try again. Too many failures is not good. Let's take a look at a live example. Probably ours mid is then. last. Probably mid then. Ours, ours is gonna be last. Yeah, ours is last. Uh, look for knights. Look for knights. 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 Keep it clear. Keep it clear. Uh, totem. Uh, uh, pyramid. Pyramid. I got a kill. I'm going for it. Three, two, one. Here we go. Don't have it yet. Uh, uh perfect. I'm going. Profit. I got it. Got it. Keep the door open. The Hold the door. Hold the door. Probably have it. No, we have pyramid. Pyramid. No, 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 not yet. Pyramid. Okay, so I'm in. You look by front, I'll look back. I, I'm shooting, I'm shooting. Getting your knife. You got him? Sick, thanks, Toast. I'm good on ammo, Sammy. I've got three rockets. I'm good on your own. Uh, hands, I've got hands, I've got hands. I'm good on ammo, I'm good. All right, I'm getting a knight spawned. Uh, Black triangle knight, Black triangle knight. Um, Left, whoever was, that's Dado, left. Yeah, Uh, There's this is last night, last night shot. Guardian, Guardian. Okay, I'm getting a room. I'm killing on Sapphire. More push side. No. Uh, teardrop. Teardrop. Rainbow. Rainbow. Teardrop. I have a teardrop room. That's a. Uh, I can. I can go get it, but you gotta let me out. Somebody let him out. Okay. Uh, I've got heart. I've got heart. Another on Sneaky. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my God. This fight seems much more complex than it actually is due to all the symbols and callouts. Keep communication clear. Write symbols down if you need to, and try to help each other out if needed. After three waves of successful obelisk offerings, you are done. Let's move to the next encounter, the caretaker. This encounter starts when you shoot the crux to open the door, so feel free to get into position first. Team composition here should try to prioritize damage. Whether this is done through ranged offensive supers or through a weapon damage based composition is completely up to you. This guide is being made while contest mode is still active, so damage requirements are much more strict. When normal mode is active, which is likely when you're watching this, damage requirements will not be as tough to hit, so feel free to use whichever strategy slowly becomes the most popular. If you're going for super based damage with weapon follow-ups, then stuff like Nova Bomb, Quiver, and Golden Gun will be great. Otherwise, you're gonna want Wells and Wards for a weapon damage based strategy. Ward is good because you will need to be mobile during the damage phase. Don't forget about high energy fire either. You can have that active in place of ward or well in case you don't have either one available. In terms of weaponry, I imagine things like linear fusions will continue to work very well, but as usual, keep tabs on the meta as things tend to shift from season to season. I am apprehensive to suggest rockets as there can be some times where the boss gets very close to you and you might kill yourself with said rocket but on later damage phases, this is much less of an issue. Be sure to run Special Finisher as someone with Divinity is going to be very useful here. There are multiple roles at play here, each with their own pretty unique job. The goal of this encounter is similar to the previous, where you want the Obelisk to accept your offering. There's a couple of caveats though. One, you need to shoot all nine symbols 
And two, you need to do it before the caretaker gets to the obelisk, otherwise you wipe. So how do you get symbols, and how do you stop the caretaker? I said that the encounter starts when you shoot the crux to open the door. In the room that you're going to open will be a bunch of different symbols on the ground that you run over in order to pick up. You can pick up at most three at a time. This room will also have a wizard or multiple wizards. Do not bother engaging with these wizards, just avoid them as much as possible. Your job here is to quickly pick up three symbols, remember which ones they are, and then get out of the room. You have a limited amount of time due to pervading darkness. If this hits 10 stacks, you're dead. If you can only pick up one or two symbols, that's okay. Just make sure you get out alive. You'll need to be let out of the room by someone on the outside, so be sure to call that out. You must wait for the obelisk to call you in the in-game feed. Then, you will shoot the panels of the obelisk that have the symbols that you picked up. Remember, you need to be quick shooting all three. Most of the time, two will be on one side and one will be on another. Sometimes you get lucky and all three are in a row. If you need help, just ask a teammate, but you should be able to solo this. Here's where strategies can deviate a little bit. My team on contest mode had three people rotating in this room. The first person gets three, the second person gets three, the last person gets three. Sometimes we had two people go in at the same time. However, not all nine symbols will spawn all at once, so I don't believe sending in three people at once actually works, but you can send in two and they can try to grab a bunch. However, I think the 333 strat worked very well, even on contest mode. You could also have one person doing all of the work. I liked having multiple people. After all nine symbols have been shot, the damage phase starts. Here's an example of the symbol team in action. I feel like I can't kill ads when they're far away. You got grid skip. I have like a killing wind snapshot grid skipper. It, that's fine, Just shoot it. <laughs> Blue head, rainbow. All right, stun. Travel. Let me out. Easy, easy stun for anybody. Yeah. He's already done, dude. He's down. Yeah, um, we're using graviton lands in the year 2022. Good. It's... Yeah, what am I doing? I should put that on. There know. we go. Finally. Dude, that's one. Going for another yeah. stun. Hey. Let me out. <laughs> it's not on my character. Neat. That's yours. Nice. I got him. I got him. Worms in the air, worms in the air. Like they just don't care? Maybe, I mean, they don't. Maybe you wait as long as you can, Seth, so you can like, get some kills or something. There's a lot of ads in the middle, and I need a second to get a new gun to kill them. I'm destroying Door. the ions. I'm going Door. for another stun. Door. Face shot. I've got back. Uh, got no. back. Okay. I got you, I got cool. you. Can you guys get my stuff? Worms, I have special worms, 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 worms. Right, I got the lance on. I don't know why I didn't think we were using it earlier. <laughs> All right, ready to go. Exploded. Yeah. All right, so what is everyone else doing? While the symbol team is rolling, the outside team will be killing ads and stunning the boss. If you don't stun the boss at all, the caretaker will very likely make it to the obelisk before you prepare it. You can designate one person specifically to stun, but if other people need to help out, feel free. In order to stun the caretaker, you need to get them to slam the ground. This is done by getting close to the boss, and as most big enemies do, if you get close to them, they will do a melee attack of some kind. So, run in and bait their melee attack. On contest mode, I literally just ran up to the caretaker, got the caretaker's gaze debuff, which causes them to aggro you, and then either tried to slide away, or I just ate the damage with an overshield on and melee resistance mods. As long as you're full health, you should live. If done correctly, the caretaker's face and back should be glowing yellow. If so, shoot the caretaker's face first. After a little bit of damage, their back should open up. Someone else needs to shoot their back, and with enough damage, they will get stunned for a short time. Then, you do it all over again as soon as they're active again. The stunner should try to stay out of the caretaker's sight as much as possible, as getting close to them is a lot easier if they aren't looking at you. I utilized Bastion on Sentinel Titan to get an overshield to more safely approach the boss. However, another method is to use your glaive's shield in order to get close. This does require a fair amount of killing to make happen though, and on normal mode, I don't imagine just running in will be much of an issue. 
While the boss is stunned, the stunner should try to shoot all of the worm missile things in the air, as while individually they don't hurt too bad, a stream of them will kill someone. All other players should be killing any and all enemies as they pop up. You're gonna have sniper vandals, scions, and more annoying as hell orange bar lurkers. Ammo may end up being an issue here. If so, the Obelisk team can slow things down a little bit to get more enemies to spawn in, which will hopefully get you some drops. Here's an example of how stunning works. All right, I'm going for first stun. Door, 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 door. All right, I'm going in. Going in. Hit on, back if you down. can, hit back, hit back. This is done. Hit, and hit back. Black hole man, traveler. So toes, toes, back. Door. Going for new stun. I said going for new stun. I'm Hands good, black yeah. hole. Shut his head. You shoot back. Shut right, his back. Oh, you sneak. Blue head. Trying to shoot these MFs in the, in the air. What's, what's the last one? Other oh, air. Okay, new stun. Earth. Head. Door, you door, should door, have. Door. Need help with head. Got head. He's got so head. So no head. All right, this should be our last kill ads. That should be Done. it. Okay, so you've stopped the boss from getting to the obelisk, and you've activated it. What now? Well, it's damage time. There are three plates by the obelisk. When a plate activates, you can deal damage to the caretaker if you're standing on it. The first plate will be on the side that the caretaker walked up. So if they walked up on the right side, the first plate will be on the right. Then it'll go to the middle, then it'll go to the left. You'll have about 10 to 15 seconds per plate to deal damage. This is where a Word of Dawn is handy. You can place it in between two plates, grab a buff, and then run through it again when going to the next plate. Wait for immune messages to pop up before moving to the next plate as a team. Something else to be aware of is that the caretaker's health is gated per floor. You can only do damage to the lighter yellow section of their health. So once you reach that limit, try not to waste any more ammo. You'll still get damage numbers, but you should just stop damage or maybe switch to primary to get that last tiny little percentage. After a damage phase, whether you hit the damage gate or not, you're going to move upstairs to the next floor and then the next floor after that. Nothing changes about how the fight works, but the fighting area is slightly different. The symbol room now has multiple entrances, but also has pitfalls that you can die in, so watch your jumps. The symbol room is also much bigger, so you might not be able to grab three symbols every time, but try your best to do it for a smoother experience. After the second floor, you go to the third floor, which has a much larger distance to run in between damage plates, and has an even more dangerous symbol room. So just be careful. The final stand is on the fourth floor, which is just three plates getting progressively closer to the boss. This is where you dump all of your damage because when that final plate runs out of a damage buff, the boss needs to be dead or it's a wipe. The boss will also be shooting you with those projectiles. If you clear a couple of them out, that's nice, but I imagine most teams are gonna be tanking those with some form of healing. Keep in mind that you can still die even in a healing rift to those missiles. Note that these also appear in earlier damage phases too. They're just much more noticeable right now. You should always be looking out for them. These projectiles deal solar damage, so a solar resistance mod or two might be pretty helpful. After that, we move to the gauntlet and the final boss. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in part two. The goal of this encounter is to have all three obelisks. The goal of this encounter is to have all three obelisks accept your offering. The goal of this video is to say obelisk correctly.